And I will say that while we didn't spend very much time talking about COVID, it has really come to the surface, especially in, in the U.S., the mental health crisis that athletes are going through, the way that uh, Mame Baini is, is who I'll choose as an example at the top of my head, you know, how she can say some people get a bad day. You know how bad that feels. She's open about saying I had three bad years and I didn't want to skate. I was so unhappy. And, and I really resonated with that because yeah. it, the, the closer you get to the goal, the, the less autonomy you have, it's like, I'm right there. I have to do these things. Even if I feel terrible, even if I'm unhappy, I'm, you can't waste the gift. You have to keep going. Um, and I think that's a really difficult headspace to be in, especially for our sport. I think a lot of sports are like this. You move away, you move five States away from home when you're still in your high school years. Um, that's a hard, that's a hard place for a kid to be in. I think we forget a lot of athletes at the games are 21 or younger. Um, they're just, they're just children. <laughs> um, so for them to be going through this mental health and carrying the weight and expectations of performing at an elite level, we are seeing a, a lot of trouble in the mental health side of sport and COVID and all the restrictions around being together is only causing more of that. We've seen, you know, all the media, the fans, everyone focuses often on failures or missed goals. Um, do you feel like mental health is being, the awareness is up. We know that in all aspects of our society, but it's very upsetting because these are voices that need to be heard it needs to be recognized. Do you think there are significant changes happening that will be for the better moving forward? What I see that's happening for the better is that it's acceptable now to talk about mental health openly in conversation. And, and you were with me during some of my hardest times where I remember my mental health struggle as an athlete and the type of fear that you feel of like, what if I'm not good enough? What if I don't succeed? All of these people have made such great investments in me with their time and their effort and financially. Um, and the fear of letting other people down can be pretty heartbreaking. Um, so on the one hand, what's better is that we can talk about that now. I, I, athletes can go to a coach and say, I'm overwhelmed. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. And coaches are starting to have a language to know how to interact with that athlete. Um, I would say what's not great is that there's still this feeling in the world that if an athlete has mental health issues, they're soft. Yeah. And I was going to say weakness, like traditionally it's like, oh, they're complaining. I remember being, whether it's for you or for anyone, we're kind of your confidant. We work with you. We work between, you know, we work with the coaches, but we're a, hopefully a buffer yeah. and hearing fears and worries and never letting that get to unnecessarily get to coaches and stuff, because it could, it could influence how you're perceived. Uh, athletes aren't soft. They're humans. Um, mm -hmm. They should go through a struggle when they're trying to accomplish things that are very new and very difficult. And they're surrounded by, you know, a team of expectations and these people that are pushing them, helping them. But it's hard because these are often young athletes, like you said, it can be really upsetting. Let's put it out there then. Okay. I was there for you. Like, you know how much I care about you and I'm proud yes. of you, whether you won crap or not, as long as you try, I'm cool. But it's cool to see medals like you produced, yeah. you know, like it's, it, it, it makes us all happy. But, um, Looking back, like from an accountability, what could have, what could I have done better for you? You know what I mean? Like, you know, I tried and we listened, but like, I think it's reasonable to everyone self-reflect and be like, okay, maybe we should have just asked more. Do they need anything? You know, stuff like totally. that. Totally. So that's something that I've learned as I've gone out of my career as an athlete and into my career as a coach. Uh, and you know, Paul Marchese, he's been on your show. So I'll attribute this to him because this is where I, I learned it. Great coaches don't have the right answers. Great coaches have the right questions. And so you're really nailing it there. And, and that's something that you always had as a strength is just, you would try to understand where we were coming from because, you know, whatever we're complaining about, whatever is, that's just the surface level. There's yeah. some, there's always something deeper. And so I think a positive that, that coaches and support staff and even families, parents need to, to know these types of things too. Um, if you have an athlete who's really upset, just being there for them as a human, because the athletes aren't soft, right? We push our bodies to extreme amounts of pain. We convince ourselves that any sacrifice is worth it. Yep. And I don't know that 
someone yeah. who hasn't been through that understands what a lonely and self-deprecating road that is all in the name of metals. And to your point, it's great when you produce, but I mean, it's what that was 12 years ago now. And so I'm, I'm happy that I have the tangible success of metals, but I'm also happy that I have the intangible awareness of what it's like when a, a support staff cares about you. Yeah. doesn't care about your rank, but cares about you as a person. And yeah. that's the most important thing. You know, watching you or anyone go through the process, you learn a lot watching. I'll never be able to understand the pressures you're going through. We can make a judgments or have ideas of what you're going through, but just watching and listening, it becomes pretty obvious that not everything that's bothering you is <laughs> has to do with skating. And But we also know that there's way more to life than speed skating, the Olympics, you know, whatever work, you know? Um, so to have perspective is really important. And um, I do think there's a lot of strides being made. We work in the Boulder, Colorado area. We've had fire shootings in a pandemic and there's mental health support groups that we know personally, friends. And it's interesting that like, there's a, there's a lot of people finally asking for help in athletes. People just expect them to be strong and tough. And that's, not fair. It might feel fair in the moment when you're trying to convince a kid, I need you to be tough right now because your gold medal race is coming up. And I, I think there's, there's room for that. Um, there is room for that in sport because you know, you're making a pitch to your boss or you're going in for a new interview or you're supporting your wife while she's giving birth. Like there are these big moments where you, you can't fall apart right now. You have to be here. You have to perform. We need you suck it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Having that is a life skill, but if that's sure. your only life skill, you're extremely underdeveloped, um, as a human. Cause yep. you know, you are allowed to have bad days. And what I always try to recommend, or I should say, remind athletes is you just need to have a lot of tools. If you're coming to me before a practice, um, versus after a practice versus before a game, there's different ways we can respond to what's going on in your life. And the strategy should change based on the stress that you're under. 